So originally I sat down to record a video talking about the George Janko podcast with Mike Malak, but recently there's been a big Logan Paul response video and another George Janko response video, and my content in that original video is entirely old. I'm going to quickly explain the situation, and then we're going to get into the reaction, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what your opinions on this situation is, or leave a dislike if you don't like the video. With that being said, basically, here's the gist of it to keep this video short. George Jenko went on a podcast with a co-host of Impulsive named Mike Malak. If you don't know what Impulsive is, it's a podcast that all three of these people co-hosted at one point or another. Logan Paul, George Jenko, Mike Malak. We got all those names locked in. George Jenko is the co-host to the co-host. He is the third man. Mike Malak is the right-hand man. Logan Paul is the main man. Logan Paul has been criticizing um, George Jenko's beliefs in Christianity and Jesus specifically for a long time. But recently, or it, what really kind of pushed George Jenko over the edge is when he continuously did it on a single podcast and he came down on Christianity extremely hard. He also did this at the same time as the crypto zoo issue was coming out. If you don't know what the crypto zoo issue basically is, uh, Logan Paul stole millions of dollars from his fans. Next podcast that comes out after these two giant podcasts that basically ruin Logan Paul's image is the Bobby Lee podcast. Bobby Lee is a giant um, comedian, and his his biggest like thing is that he likes to make jokes about um, assault, basically, literally assaulting people, somebody assaulting him, somebody assaulting somebody else, basically assault. And this is in the not in the normal type of assault. This is in the um, type of assault. With that being said. He basically, throughout this entire Bobby Lee podcast, reaches around and keeps grabbing George. Grabbing his, his little, uh, his Woody, basically. He keeps grabbing George's Woody. And after a long time of George going through this mistreatment, he ends up getting up and walking out. But when the podcast is posted, it makes George look like a wuss because they cut out every single instance of S.A. in the entire podcast. George Shenko goes on a podcast, his own podcast now. He's been doing it for about a year now. Mike Malak is invited onto the George Shenko podcast, and they reveal that basically George Shenko was not paid for certain things. He wasn't allowed to do certain things, and that's where this Logan Paul video comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Reaction Brody. Okay, so Logan Paul recently made a reaction to George Shenko's podcast, and I want to watch it, break it down, and make sure we understand everything that is happening. Because Logan missed some big things. He missed some huge things. Some of the things were actually the game changer in this situation. Let's go ahead and watch the Logan Paul TikTok. My own show because we're not making money on this show. And I'm getting pushed on it money on the show the i can show the... you my books i was spending 10 g's a month being on the show all right let's talk about this obviously i wasn't on the podcast to represent myself so i'd like to clarify a few things that were said as well as having his own credit card all expenses related to the show were paid for including all travel and lodging obviously george's total reimbursement came out to twenty thousand dollars three hundred and seventeen cents I also want to note real quickly that because we do know that Logan Paul is a known manipulator and does manipulate these situations over and over again to benefit himself, I will be, whenever it comes to a word versus word situation, taking George Janko's side just blatantly because he's lied before, he'll lie again. Also, on top of that, a receipt showing a text message isn't necessarily a super trustworthy piece of evidence. On top of that, I do believe that George does say that he was paid for certain parts, but there was a stretch of a couple months where George was not paid the agreed upon amount. I'd love to see any books that show otherwise. Spending $120,000 a year to be on a show is a little confusing. This is a Again, he did not ever say in the podcast, George Engel never said in the podcast that he was spending $120,000 a month. He said during a certain period of a month to three months, he was spending 10 G's a month. And that's what it was the issue, that he couldn't pay his rent for those couple of months and he had to rely on other people. On top of that, Logan Paul doesn't address the giant statement that George Janko claims Logan Paul said to him, which was, have your rich dad pay for it. That is a big thing that Logan entirely missed. The guy who's sending a screenshot of $11 million a week that he's making. This statement is so crazy that it's almost laughable. That would mean I'm making $572 million a year. I'm nowhere near that. He keeps making the comparison of a year. He was not saying that it was a year. He was saying that he sent a screenshot of $11 million a week. 
That's what he's saying. He's not saying that Georgenko is not saying that Logan Paul makes this much money a year. That what happened was Prime had a very successful twisting the truth a little like bit 60 here. To 70 million, and I sent it to our group chat because I was proud of the business. I was stoked to show. 60 to 70 million when you are a one third owner, or at least you show yourself as a one third owner of Prime, along with KSI and the company that really runs Prime. If you're making 60 million, sorry, quick math would tell you that you just made 20 million that week in the last four weeks, which would not be 11 million. But George Jenko was also over exaggerating to make a point. Show the boys, and I think George maybe misinterpreted that as like my personal income. The he show clearly did. Bottom, and we Partially. Weren't getting paid. I was getting paid five thousand dollars a month. But you did make a sizable amount of money on the show. And by the what way, I'm always like, grateful. I was always grateful. Like that. For yeah, I don't like to talk about money. I know he doesn't want to talk money. I I know he doesn't like to talk about money, and I've watched this before. He's literally about to reveal the entirety of George Jenko's entire year's worth of pay. Finances are a very private thing. That's a very messed up thing for Logan to do. I think he could have gotten the point across without showing this random ass word pad that we don't even know how to fact check. I don't know he believed it out, but George made $317,000 in the 15 months that he got paid for on Impulsive. The work requirements consisted of about three days a month, uh, three hours each day, traveling the world, networking, and meeting some of the coolest people ever. It comes out to about $2,300 per hour, and he also had 10% equity of the entire show. Well, now you he has talked about the equity in the show. George Jenko has himself. George Jenko has also said that he is very grateful for the platform that Logan has given him. This entire thing is just a stroking off himself section and I really don't appreciate that by Logan Paul. I've noticed a lot of times what Logan Paul likes to do is he likes to come at somebody's personal character rather than showing realistic evidence that we can fact check today and he also doesn't like to talk to people in person. You, not Caleb, not Kevin, not Dylan. Nobody f***ing called me when I got fired. George did not get fired. He quit. I'll touch on that in a second but after he quit, I called him. Which, again, this is a cut clip. Later on, literally the next sentence, George Janko says, the only person that called me was Logan. Cutting clips to make it suit your narrative is not okay. Frequently, I reached out. I wanted to reconcile the friendship. I invited him to my birthday party and WrestleMania and even my ranch a few weeks later. He chose not to come. He also unfollowed all the people he mentioned on Instagram, which is maybe why they didn't call him. He is checking in his currently. We don't know the exact day that he has unfollowed all of these people, but currently, obviously, he's not going to follow all these people because he's not friends with them anymore. He's not chill with them anymore. Obviously, he unfollowed them. I think that it's a little bit of a childish move to unfollow all of them from George Janko's point, and I'm not going to say that George Janko did the perfect thing here, but I will say Logan Paul is cutting up these narratives. Logan Paul is showing text messages of him texting George Janko. When George Janko was clearly very betrayed by Logan Paul, he does not have to respond to you, Logan Paul. He doesn't have to do that at that current moment. He wasn't ready to talk about things. You were slandering him on your podcast. I don't know. I can't speak for them, but he still does not follow them to this day. And then on my birthday, you guys shot three episodes, so I couldn't show up. The two episodes he's talking about, not three, were shot four days after George's birthday. His birthday's on January 3rd. We shot those episodes on January 7th. We were already in Vegas signing the UFC to Prime, and as we do, want to capitalize on the location and our use of time and energy and the guests in that city. George didn't come to work because he wanted to spend time with his family for his belated birthday, which I totally understand and we even praised. One of the things that I love about... So... Another thing that uh, George Shenko clearly might have misinterpreted, and he might have misinterpreted that they did film the podcast on the day of the birthday. Again, I will say it again, word versus word. I'm going to take George Jenko's word because George Jenko said these things in front of Mike Malak and Mike Malak did not say that they were false. Logan Paul now, after the fact, is saying, no, we didn't film that on your birthday. But when George Jenko talked to Mike Malak and said, you filmed on my birthday, Mike Malak said that whole week was messed up. That does not mean that you filmed on any other day other than the birthday. That means that Logan Paul is skewing the truth in certain ways and messing with things because Mike Malak did not address these things. About George, he prioritizes his family yeah. and friends over anything. I got my show going and then not only was I controlled and pushed around on Impulsive, but then Logan's making calls and directing my show. He told me that I couldn't take Celsius. So this is the big one. Making calls, trying to make it seem like I wanted to control his show is absolutely ridiculous. As you can see uh, right here, I was like, hey, we got to get you prime because I saw him drinking our competitor and he told me to call him. He was filming my reaction to tell me he took a deal with the competitor. I told him, please don't film like I I'd like to talk about this. I hope you're joking, by the way. The truth is, I thought it was a bad look 
book that my best friend and co-host took a brand deal with our competitor without uh, consulting me, asking me, giving us even a chance to match it before he signed the deal. Because the audience that he's building, at least at the time, on his own podcast was being funneled directly from the podcast that I was building with him. I you know what else is being funneled directly from the podcast that he is building with them? Prime. Prime is always directly funneled through the Impulsive podcast. Where is George's, George's, George Janko, or as he calls him, Georgie? Where is his money from Prime? Where is his money from Prime? There's no money from Prime that he has received. There's no equity in Prime that he has received. He hasn't gotten anything. And it's actually a run-on joke in the Impulsive Podcast. How do I know this? Because I was actually a fan of the Impulsive Podcast for a long time before all this stuff with George Janko came out. Before Logan Paul publicly slandered Christianity. Before Logan Paul publicly stole money from his crypto zoo victims. Before Logan Paul showed his true colors and reinstated the thing that he had already shown us that he's a bad person. He showed us this in the very early stages of his career with the Japanese forest-ish situation. Now he's just showing it again. I said, hey, dude, I understand you need to make money. The entire text is right here that I sent him after our conversation because I did. Which is a firing text. Read through this text. I can promise you it is a firing text. I don't have time to read through all of it, but if you read through this entire text, you will realize that very clearly, if you receive this text, you would think that you got fired. Logan Paul is saying that he chose to quit instead of getting fired, but he had already signed these bills. He had already signed these contracts in trying to market with Celsius. I didn't understand his position if he needed to make money, but I thought it was also a little odd because he did make $317,000 in 15 months. Regardless, I did tell him I can't have him on impulsive. $317,000 is the money that George Janko made, but he was also paying for his wife's salary. He is also paying for a couple of filmers' salaries. So right there, if, if we have four people splitting $350,000, it makes it seem like a lot less, makes it look a lot closer to $75,000. And if he couldn't pay any of them, even a single one of them for one month, then they are no longer have a house. That's how mortgages work, kids. If he's going to take the deal with the competitor, but if after he makes the money, he wants to come back to the podcast, he's more than welcome. Hey man, where you're at, there's no room for you to grow. They won't let you grow. They will not let you grow. I thought saying that to Mike was a little... Uh, Logan Paul is going to go into a uh, growth. He's basically going to say, Mike Malak, you grow all the time. George Jenko is talking about personal growth, not social media clout. He is talking about personal growth. If you continued the clip, Logan Paul, you would understand that. But you are cutting things out just like you do to make sure that things are taken out of context. A little crazy. He's grown a lot. Uh, he has 2.7 million subscribers since we met. He's a multimillionaire, a best-selling author. I tried as much as I could to help him get into those positions, and it's not entirely because of me. Mike is a phenom in his own right, and he capitalized on the platform that I gave him, which is awesome. Just like George is doing now, but if that's not growth, like, what is? In fact, I think people forget, like, I praise George for starting a podcast, like, a lot. George, he started his own podcast. I think it's a great idea. I always love on my co-host venture. When he was on the podcast, but as soon as he left the podcast, he started saying some mean things about him. When he was on the podcast, you did praise it because it's easy to say something good to somebody's face, but it's really easy to say something bad behind somebody's back. They're out and do their own things. Congratulations. It's awesome, guys. Check out his podcast. And also saying they won't let you grow was a little hurtful because I thought at least I helped Mike do some of the things that he did. And I even encouraged him to start his own podcast. I think you should take a page out More of about Mike. And start Again, a it's personal no growth. no greater feeling than watching people you love succeed. I tried to give people around me a platform. And if they capitalize on it, fantastic. Mike and George did. And George will even tell you this. Off camera, I encouraged him to pursue media and comedy since 2015. I really believe in the kid. And I still do. There's a lot more. I'm not going to get into it. But this isn't to say, by the way, that. I didn't f up along the way. I did. I should not have mocked his beliefs. I apologize for that. I should have stuck up for him with Bobby Lee, and I definitely should have had his back. Should have stuck up with him for Bobby Lee is glancing over a giant thing. What George Jenko has said Bobby Lee did to him was sexually assault him. And you still won't say that out loud. You refuse to talk about that out loud. You don't want to say that. Why, why won't you just simply say Bobby Lee sexually assaulted George? Why won't you say that? You won't say that. You will not say that, Logan Paul, and you you won't address that. That is the biggest issue that George Janko had with the podcast, and what made him leave in the end was that specific issue, and you will not say it. You won't say it, and you won't address it, and that is the biggest issue, and that's the reason why I literally believe that this response video is the worst ever response video I've, I've seen from Logan Paul act more like a friend. There's a lot of things I would have done differently, but here we are. It saddens me that our story has unfolded this way. I wish him nothing but health, wealth, happiness, all the success that he wants. Um, and I hope that one day we can sit down and have a relationship and a conversation. I had to start my own. Okay. 
He wants to sit down, have a relationship and a conversation. But if you look at this right here, this is George Janko calling him out to come to the podcast. Basically, George, I would say in this this clip, is very full of himself. I will preface with that. He does sound pretty full of himself, but he also re is reacting to this on Mother's Day. He clearly has a lot going on. Hey, first of all, happy Mother's Day before I get into this drama because I, I got to go take my mom out. I'm having a splendid day today. Uh, second, yo, your TikTok is cute, bro. It's cute. I get it. You're doing your best to show face. Do whatever you need, bro. Like, talk to your team. Do whatever you need. But when you want to be a man, come talk to me like a man. Let's sit down like men and talk about it. Mike did it. Mike's a real man. I think George Janko will look back at this in a couple of weeks and he'll realize that this is not the correct thing that he could have said. He should have said some other things. He should have called him out to sit in person, but not in this way. Man, he, got, he had the chance to come sit, talk. Show all of his points of views, brother. You could bring camera. You could bring re you could bring your attorney, bro. Come sit on the couch and talk to me like a man. Let's talk, bro. Because obviously you want to talk. Let's talk. Come talk to me, bro. Talk. So he wants to talk to him. He wants to talk. He wants to talk in real life. He wants to not have an accountant or a lawyer saying saying and drafting everything that Logan Paul is trying to say in this video. Logan. Logan Paul is very clearly reading off some type of script, something that is written for him. This is not the type of words that Lo Logan Paul has said. I've watched the podcast for a long time, and sometimes the guy says a lot of stupid, idiotic things in intelligent ways, if that makes sense. But uh, in this case, you can very clearly tell that it's not something that Logan Paul would have normally said. Because Logan Paul, according to himself, likes to approach situations head on. He's not approaching the situation head on. He is making videos after videos, addressing it and making it seem like it's a different way than it really is. Ultimately, what I think would be the most respectable thing to do is Logan Paul coming on to George Jenko's podcast, just like George Jenko has been the co-host of his podcast for so long, and just simply having an honest conversation with him. I think also there's another way to settle this, and that is the personal way, the way that is not on social media, and that's the way that it honestly should have been settled from the start. It should have been a, a thing of the Bobby Lee podcast is scrapped because George clearly was uncomfortable. It should have been a thing of the podcast where Logan Paul literally slanders Christianity was scrapped because George Janko felt like he was getting beaten down on. It's messed up situation. It's not a great thing. Logan Paul has made basically the wrong dis situation, wrong decision in every single aspect, and I hate to see it because I really do enjoy some of Logan Paul's po content, but I can't sit down and watch it because I know how much of an a-hole he is. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this made your understanding of Logan Paul and George Janko a little bit better. See you guys on streams on Friday and Sunday.